All right, so let's move on and talk about some big news that's actually relating to how startups build and go against incumbents. Jason, we wrapped about the Meta and Scale deal, as everyone heard. It's a minority transaction. Meta's buying 49% of Scale and taking their CEO, the last remaining co-founder. The interesting kind of second order effect of that deal is that a lot of customers of Scale are now looking elsewhere. Essentially, they don't want to go be a Scale customer because they're Google or another competitor with Meta. Reuters had a great story up about this. And Maybe Google a good did. idea to explain what Scale does, since most people don't know about AI training and, and how deep this is going now. Yeah, I was going to... Yeah, no worries. Uh, yeah. So Scale does a number of things. It was most famous for data labeling, helping companies get their data in an AI-friendly shape. It also does LLM evaluations. Uh, I believe they do RLHF, which is reinforcement learning with humans in the loop. Yeah, yes. there and you go. this is all examples of this might be... Uh, Remember like the Silicon Valley hot dog, not hot dog yes. uh, app, you know, <laughs> in the early days, you would just have humans say what's in the photo. They would type five items in the photo. Another human would type five items in the photo photo. And if they got four of the same things and they said, this is an orange, you know, and it's a, it's a man eating an orange on a beach and there's a seal, you know, they would say, okay, great. Two out of two people are great. We'll put those tags. And it was called tagging back in the day. You put tags on, humans tag stuff on Flickr. Mm -hmm. And then people would use that Flickr data or Instagram data from those tags to train AI and do machine learning. But there were also companies doing it. Then it became, tagging was kind of easy. So then with large language models, what they started doing would be, you asked a question about finance. Hey, explain to me the rule of 72. Sure. They would look at it. And you know, when you're asked to give a thumbs up or a thumbs down, that's you giving some feedback that would go to with a thumbs down or people complaining about it, an expert in finance. And over time, it went from literally somebody who could tell you what was in a photo, which is like any human being who can use the English language and even poorly, and they don't really need to even be able to put full sentences together to being somebody who's a finance person who says that description is technically wrong because of these little nuance and they rewrite it. They would literally go into the answer and change the answer and polish it. And they would send that to two finance people and then look for, okay, is it clean, right? You do a double blind kind of situation. Yep. That's what Scale AI was doing all this time. And they were making more and more money from it. So, so now the question is, is Meta going to just turn that off and just say, we're not going to provide that to other people. We're just going to use it for our own needs. And that would make sense for them to do it, but it would also be super anti-competitive. And I'm sure this, I don't know what's going on with M&A. We talked about it, I think, last week, on Friday, maybe even. And, you know, as I said, I just look at the game on the field. Everything's, all these things are happening. So maybe they're just going to get a pass. But that would be a thing to look at. Did Zuckerberg buy this to kill it? 